Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dev here and today I've got a very exciting video for you guys. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can convert our 2D images into these 3D animations. As you can see on the screen here, I've got this image I made in university and basically in under one minute, I've created this cool animation for it. It's a great presentation technique. It's very easy to do. And we're also going to be looking at how we can create a 3D model from our 2D images too, right? Both of these will be done through AI generated depth maps, um, which I'll explain later on if you don't know what they are. But we're going to be looking at three tools in this video. They're all completely free. The first one is Layer Pits Converter. The second one is Blender, which is a tool you guys have to download. And the third one is Zoe Depth. So Zoe Depth and Layer Picks are actually online tools, so they're simple to use. Blender, you've got to download. But in general, all the tools here are completely free. If you guys do enjoy this video and you learn something new, I would very much appreciate it if you can leave a like and let's get into it. Okay, so here's the examples we're going to look at for this video. As you can see, they vary quite a bit. The first one is this house example, that's an AI generated image. This is using the Virus plugin, but in general, it's nothing too complex. I think we can get a pretty nice result from this one. The next one is this render of a cafe. Um, because this was a render, I was also able to extract the depth pass, which we're going to use later on to actually create the 3D images and the 3D model. So it'll be good to see how an AI generated depth map compares to one that we've actually got because this is a render. Like I said, I've extracted it. And the last image is different to the rest because this was an image that I've uh, created at university. Obviously this was done using a 3D model, but I've textured it using Photoshop and also done these um, 2D graphic lines on top. So this is like an environmental section. Again, this probably isn't accurate. I just want to see how AI would interpret this. And yeah, let's look at our first tool, which is the Layer Pix Converter. So our first tool that we're going to look at is Layer Pix Converter. This is definitely the easiest one to use. One thing you guys need to know is that you need to create an account. Don't worry, it's completely for free and you do have unlimited uh, trials like this year. So what we need to do is we just need to click on upload and then upload the image which we want to have this kind of 3D presentation technique going on. So the first one I'm going to look at is this one, which is the image of the house. And as you can see straight away, it's presented a kind of 3D animation for our 2D image, which is great. This is through an AI generated depth map, which I'll explain what's going on in a bit. But here, if you want to play with a few of the settings for our presentation technique, we can play with the animation length uh, in terms of the loop cycle, the animation style, say if I want it to be vertical only instead of perspective going around in a circle, the amount of motion, the focus point. One important setting is edge dilation. As you can see here, we've got this kind of extension to this house. Um, it's kind of clipping a bit of the background. The reason why this is needed is because if we made this edge dilation completely zero, as you can see here, some of our uh, the top part of the house, as you can see, starts warping because it's picking up this kind of artifact from the background. Um, even though this part does look okay here, you can see we start messing up other parts of the image, right? So you do need a bit of edge dilation. So if I increase this to the maximum, you can see our foreground, which is the house, stays completely fine. But we do have, uh, we are picking up these kind of elements from the background. Think of it like this kind of feather between what's in the foreground and background. And in terms of advanced editor, this is just looking at the um, kind of uh, animation between the camera path in terms of if you want it to shake a bit more on different axes between X, Y, and Z. Um, in terms of how this works, this is through a depth map. So if we go here to depth map, and if we click on preview once, here we can see our final result. If we click on it again, we can see this is the depth map that AI has generated for us, okay? For those of you that don't know what a depth map is, this is how this tool works, and it's something we're gonna use later on. It's essentially this image where everything is black and white, right? All it's conveying to us is the depth of this image. Everything that's black is furthest away. Everything that's white or essentially lighter is close to the camera. And then all of this is just looking at the depth of the space. Imagine it almost like this kind of foggy scene, right? In reverse. The fact that AI has generated this for us automatically is incredible. Uh, this is essentially what the tool does. Um, and essentially how it's working to create this 3D effect is it's just kind of displacing parts that are close to the camera at a different rate to the parts that are furthest away from the camera, right? This is how this tool works and how why it's uh, really cool to create this presentation technique. The part that's really cool about Layer Pix Converter is the fact that we can actually edit this depth map really easily in case it gets it wrong, right? So here you can see I've got a bit of um, these sliders here in terms of brush sizes, in terms of brush sizes, or in terms of the depth, you know, in terms of black and white. So if I made this uh, white here, we can see I can draw on it and kind of correct the depth map. Or if I, let's say if I undo this, and let's say if I want to straighten out this part of the image, or let's say this part should be a lot more in the foreground, all I can do is I can just click on the picker tool. So if I click on the sky here, there we go. I've got the exact color that's used on the sky. And then I can get my brush and then I can start editing it in order to make this more of a straight edge. As you can see here, I'm kind of cleaning this up this edge. There we go, which is cool. Fantastic. 
and just so you guys know that these um, these controls are quite sensitive uh, so you guys are gonna have to try it out you can hit undo here and then if you just hit preview again here it's overlaying our depth map on top of our image so we can see what's going on and if I hit preview again there we go we can see um, we've actually edited the depth map right so if I went back to preview here and let's say if I made um, this part which is black if I made it uh, which is something that's in the foreground if I made it appear something like that's in the background uh, so if I increase my brush size here we go oh this was quite a bit much if I just do size here there we go and now if I preview again preview again we can see this bottom part now is displacing at a much faster rate than you know everything else here and this is how this kind of depth maps working right it's just distorting different parts at a different amount but essentially the cool thing about layer pix converter is that once I'm done with this say if I don't like the changes I made I can just discard them and then if I go to depth map here or sorry if I go to share I can choose to export this animation you know between the style that I had before in terms of the motion and the length I can either save it as a gif an mp4 or, or as facebook 3d or I can just save the depth map once I'm happy with it, right? So I can save this depth map, hit save, and there we go. I can also save this as a GIF so I can upload this later on on my social media. So let's look at our next example, which is the um, kind of cafe shot that we have. So here, if you notice, if I go to depth map here, I can either edit all of this exactly how I want, or I can upload a depth map. So let's see how the layer pits converter uh, compares with an AI generated depth map. First one that we've actually got through a render software, which we would assume is more accurate, right? So if I go here to upload, and if I choose this cafe shot, let's see what you get. So I hit open. Here you can see for the shot that it's actually working pretty well, right? We do have a bit of distortion going on at the bottom, but I mean, think about it. If we go to depth map and I hit preview, and I hit preview again, Look at all this that AI has generated for us. Like the fact that it hasn't gotten confused between all of the edges between the floor tiles, all of this vertical cladding, all of this vertical cladding that's going on, a lot of furniture behind each other. It seems to have recognized it pretty well, right? So if I go to preview here, here is the AI generated depth map. If I go back to my images here, and if I go to um, this depth map here, and let's go back to my online tool, there we go, and this one here. Here we can see that actually, it's worked pretty well in terms of it's recognizing all this uh, chairs and the, ob and the objects in the foreground here. As we can see, it's even recognizing the light. Um, it's decided to uh, set a different depth to the background. Fair enough. If I go to the left, if I go to the left here, here you can see even the distinguishment between these two, two different walls. It's actually got that, which is quite surprising, right? In terms of how much it can recognize, even the wall here, a bit behind the counter. Like there is a lot that AI has to do and the fact that it's generated something instantly, as you saw straight off the bat, is incredible to me. And let's say if I don't like this depth map and let's see if I want to upload my own one. So if I go to upload depth map and I choose this example, there we go, if I hit preview. Here we can see that, okay, the foreground is working quite well, but between the background, it's distorting quite a, quite a big amount. From what I found is that the layer picks one that was actually generated for us, works quite well especially through the settings that it's using to kind of dis uh, displace these uh, scene in order to have this 3d effect but to me the fact that this ai generated one so if i hit discard there we go this is the one that ai is, that is actually generated now by ai to me this works pretty well and i'm actually very convinced with it right uh, and say if we go look out for our last example of the image if i just hit upload and go to this environmental section that i've done at university here we can see it's actually working decently well right like this isn't an accurate scene whatsoever like i said this is a 3d model but i started photoshopping it in terms of textures and there's um these kind of 2d uh kind of wind arrows as i was showing same with the solar um arrows but the fact that it's able to generate depth from this to me automatically is incredible so if i hit preview here you can see that it recognizes that this arrow goes close to the camera and then it starts going further away so here also we can see that it's pushed the sun in the foreground which is why it's going at a different rate to the image so if i hit preview again we can see our sun's warping, warping a bit more and this is why you would need to edit your depth map this is why i've shown you the editor but overall this is to me this is amazing the fact that it's done all of this automatically and i've just taken this image and i can now upload this on my social media and have a mu much better presentation technique okay so let's look at chucking these depth maps that we generated into blender and seeing how we can make our 2d image an actual 3d model all right so what i'm going to do now is just load up blender Okay, so once we're in Blender, I'm just going to do the default cube and I'm going to go to add, mesh, and plane. 
So this plane is now going to serve as the image that we're going to, well this plane is now going to serve as the base for our image. And I'm just going to make my scale, if I believe, if I go to this photo, if I go to the properties here, if I know the um, width, it's 1734 by 768. So if I make the width here uh, 1344 or 1 1.344 by 0 0.768, there we go. And now if I click on the modeling tab, if I select everything, right click and hit subdivide, I'm now going to subdivide this by 100 cuts. There we go. The reason I'm doing this is just so we actually have um, more cuts for our geometry to displace when we add a displacement map. So now I'm going to go back to layout. There we go. And I'm going to add a modifier and I'm going to click on displace. And for the displacement here, I'm just going to choose an image. This is obviously going to be our depth map. So if I click on open here and if I paste my previous location and if I do the previous depth map that I had for this image, there we go. If I hit open image, there we go. Look at that. We can now see that our plane has now been displaced by the depth map of this image, right? So if we hover around here, you can see it works pretty well. So if I go here and if I just click on this again, if I click on the um, the displacers again, so if I click on this and if I want to add another displacer, so if I click on this object here, or sorry, the spanner, and if I now click add modifier, if I hit something uh, such as subdivision here, wherever it is, da, 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 subdivision surface. There we go, we can see it's a bit smoother. I'm just gonna make this two. And now it'll be nice if you can see this textured like the original image. So if I just click on this, and if I now click on this, um, if I now click on this material properties, if I now hit new, there we go. And if we go to the shading tab up top, here we go. And all I'm gonna do is just load this image that I have. So this one, I'm just gonna drag it into Blender fantastic it's loaded there and now i'm just going to drag this color into base color right and there we go we can see it's loaded there one thing that's going to help however is if we click on the texture again or we can just click on the material if we make specular go down same with roughness just so you know this isn't affecting too much as we rotate but now if i go back to layout and i click on the shading mode which is up here the third button viewport shading here you can see we've now got our image which is now a 3d model right like how amazing is this? We've got an image that was generated for us from AI and now we've used AI to generate a depth map and now this image is now essentially a 3D model which we can use. And for those of you that aren't best at Blender, what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at this in a default 3D viewer. So let's just click on this mesh here, make sure you're on the rotate tool and then make sure you click on the red axis. There you go, as soon as you got that and you can see you're rotating it on this plane, just hold control and then as you can see when our plane is also at 90 degrees or if you just went to object and made it go from 0 to 90, there you go, that also rotated it. Now we can export this into a default viewer. In case you did want to delete this top part here, or there's part of the mesh that you don't like, just click on your mesh once, right click, convert to mesh, there we go. And now if we went from object mode to edit mode, we've got all of this part here, which we can just select up here, there we go, and we can press delete and then you want to delete the vertices, right? There we go, we can do the same thing again. I'm going to delete all of this, delete vertices. Oh, I think it's only selecting the ones that uh, it can see. So we need to click on this little ghost mode here. There we go, toggle x-ray. Now if we click on all of this, delete, delete vertices. There we go, it's done and it's clean. And now we've got a sky that's not going to affect our lighting, right? So if we went back to shading or viewport shading, oh, sorry, if I just left, if I left edit mode and go back to object mode, here we go. And now what we want to do is we want to go to file, export, export this as an FBX. I'm just going to call this something like test01. And now what I want to do is I want to make sure my path mode is on to copy. And I want this little button here to be uh, ticked so that our text is actually embedded within the file. And now I just want to hit export to FBX. And now if we go to that folder, and as we can see, it's only an 8 meg file. But if I click on it, here we can see that we've now got our image loaded into a 3D model, right? So look how cool this is. Obviously the lighting isn't gonna be as accurate, but like I said, the fact that we've got an AI create image and the fact that we've got AI generated depth maps, and now that we've put this into a 3D model, to me, this is just mind blowing. And this of course works in terms of when you rotate your light, however you want this to be. Uh, to me, this is just such a cool presentation technique. Is how usable it is so far, I'm not sure. And obviously if you go to the left side, or to the right side, sorry, you can see that there's a bit of a problem because this side didn't exist. 
AI had to kind of fill the space based on what was available but obviously the left side looks a lot better because this facade was showing in our image and the, just imagine where this will be in two or three years in terms of what you can use in terms of presentation techniques or even if someone just wanted to 3D print this now in terms of just a quick presentation technique. And for our final example, we're going to start looking at Zoe Depth. This one is easier in case you don't have access to Blender, even though Blender's free. I guess uh, not everyone wants to use it. This is based on a website, so it's probably a lot easier for you. I found this on another YouTuber's video, uh, Steven, or yeah, Steven. I'm going to uh, link his uh, video down below. He's a great guy. He also uploads similar topics to AI and architecture, so check him out. But in general, for this one, what we want to do, you can do depth prediction. So it's going to work like layer picks converter in terms of finding the depth map. However, I personally find layer picks is more accurate, but we, what we can do is do image to 3D based on the website alone, right? So if I just click on input image here, so if we just drag our image, so I click on input image, there we go. I can just drag this. And now what we can do is we can just hit submit. And now this is gonna create a 3D model for us in terms of it's gonna actually give the, generate the depth map for us automatically and use it to create a 3D image, okay? So as you can see here, it's created a 3D image pretty quickly. And overall, what it's doing is it's using a different approach where it's kind of projecting everything onto a plane. This model, this kind of uh, model I find has a lot more limitation to the one in Blender, but I feel like you can play with this a bit more. Uh, this is just uh, from what I've seen so far. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is definitely doing it on the web. It isn't something as powerful as Blender. It is obviously a lot more accessible. Um, I feel like sometimes you can hit keep occlusion edges. And then if you click on this, you'll see what happens you get more solid edges joined there. Whether you prefer this or not, that's up to you. But I guess on this side, it makes a bit more sense. Um, but again, this depends on your scene. My personal preference is to use this with Blender, but like I said, this is more accessible. And if you do want to download this 3D model, just click on this little button here that says I, and then you're going to get a format that's a .glb. So as you just click on it, you can see you've now got this as a 3D model. Uh, I mean, to me personally, the Blender one is obviously a lot better, but uh, in case you don't have Blender, say if you don't have access to run it on your PC, this is definitely a viable solution. And like I said, this is done on the web. I know I've said this throughout the video quite a bit, but like I said, I still find this so insane. The fact that we're able to generate an AI image and then we're able to generate the depth map using AI. And then we're able to use these techniques like on um, the Zoe Depth or on Blender in terms of making an image into a essentially a 3D model just by using the depth map to kind of push the surfaces. To me, this is so insane. Um, I don't know where this is going to go in a few years. I think presentation techniques are going to get easier and easier to make. Uh, if you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like. It really does help me a lot. And yeah, let me know down below what you guys think of these presentation techniques, which, you, which ones you guys are going to use, or where you think this is going to head in the future. That's it for this video. Take care, guys. Cheers.